It's time for episode 37 of The Crisis Show here on Google Hangouts and on YouTube. It's May 1st, 2013. Good evening. My name is Rich Klein. I'm president of Rich Klein Crisis Management in New York City. That's www.richkleincrisis.com. I'm also the founder and host of The Crisis Show. So tonight, what I'd like to do is talk to you about the really incredible chain of events in the last half of April 2013, the last two weeks of April, in which we saw multiple catastrophic crisis situations around the world. So what we had were these four catastrophic crisis situations. I'm going to run through them briefly and then make a larger point about this thread. So first, on April 15th, 2013, we had the two pressure cooker bombs that went off at the finish line of the Boston Marathon. And that, of course, was followed by the subsequent shootout and uh, very tense situation in Watertown, Massachusetts, uh, culminating in the death of one of the uh, uh, bombers and the arrest of the other. Less than 24 hours later, or by the way, let's just uh, talk about some data here uh, before we leave the Boston situation. There were uh, three people uh, killed at the Boston Marathon bombings, uh, and the bombs injured 264 people. Uh, in Watertown, Massachusetts, the suspects killed an uh, officer from the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, uh, and so that made a total of four deaths between uh, Boston and Watertown. Less than 24 hours later, uh, at the West Fertilizer Company in West Texas, just uh, a short distance from Waco, on April 17th, 2013, there was an explosion at the factory at this facility in which 15 people were killed, more than 160 people injured, and more than 150 buildings damaged or destroyed. Uh, and the cause of that blast is, as of yet, is still unknown. So just to recap, uh, we had the Boston Marathon bombings on April 15th. We had, uh, on April 17th, the explosion at the West Fertilizer Factory. Uh, on April 20th, there was an earthquake in China that left uh, more than 200 people dead and an estimated 100,000 people homeless, and that was in the Sichuan province of China. And then uh, the fourth catastrophic incident I want to touch on tonight was the uh, Sabah building collapse. That was the garment factory outside of Bangladesh on April 24th. And in that uh, situation, uh, as of now, at least 413 people were killed and another 2,500 people were injured. Many others remain missing. Uh, before I go further, let me just say uh, uh, our hearts and prayers go out to the victims in all these catastrophes. Uh, they are some of the worst uh, kinds of situations you could imagine. Uh, the bombings in Boston, the explosion in West Texas, the earthquake in China, and the building collapse at the garment factory um, in uh, Bangladesh. This was all in a two-week period. And in the 30 years I've been doing public relations and journalism, I cannot remember any span of time in which we had such massive catastrophes, such massive crisis situations. So what does that mean for you? Uh, you, the viewer, who might be in business, in a nonprofit, in government. What it means is that if you think you have prepared for the worst crisis situation imaginable, you probably haven't. So whether you're a leader in business, in government, at a nonprofit, or a higher education institution, take a look at these four catastrophic crisis situations. They are to me what I call the uh, level one or uh, type A crisis situations natural disasters, explosions, fires, uh, earthquakes, uh, the collapse of a building. 
It's a good time to look at these crisis situations that I've just talked about and think about your organization. So for example, maybe it's a good time to find out about the structural integrity of your real estate. Maybe it's a good time to find out if you have an evacuation plan, uh, if there was a massive fire or explosion at one of your factories. Maybe it's a good time to think about a exit strategy if there was an earthquake, an evacuation plan in a superstorm Sandy. Uh, we've seen the giant crisis situations in the last half of 2012 and the first part of 2013. They have come nonstop, unfortunately. And so it's really a good time to take a hard look at your assets, at your employees, at your uh, protocol, at your emergency plans, at, uh, at your crisis communications plans. Make sure you have all your ducks in a row. That doesn't mean that things don't go wrong when a crisis hits. They do and they will. But you want to minimize the loss of life first and foremost. You want to minimize the injuries. You want to make sure that your business can have some form of continuity if there is some kind of catastrophic event that impacts your business. And remember, uh, at the Boston Marathon, there were businesses affected because, of course, the, there was a lockdown in Boston and in Watertown and the surrounding areas. So if you think about, hey, what could happen in my city if something similar happened? How would we run our business? Okay, so think about off-site operations. Think about all your communications protocols. Now is the time to do it because you're not in crisis mode. Hopefully, you're not in crisis mode right now. But the Boston lesson is just that. So beyond the, the tragedy of the injuries and, uh, and deaths that came out of Boston and Watertown, there were businesses affected by that lockdown and by the bombings themselves and by the shootout in Watertown. So think about what your business would do if everything was put on hold for a few days, okay? Uh, you could also think about the structural integrity of your real estate property. Look at this factory in Bangladesh. Uh, we also often hear about building collapses here in the States and other places around the world. So a good time to examine the integrity of your physical buildings. Maybe you have offices around the world. Good time to check on those. Make sure you have an evacuation plan as well. So, of course, these four crisis situations are a reminder of the worst kinds of crisis situations that can impact your organization. But in your organization, you may have uh, other kinds of situations that are slow burning or slow brewing situations that you know about, but don't think of them as crisis situations. And you need to do that, particularly if there's situations involving uh, lawsuits filed against your organization, you need to do that if there are uh, disgruntled employees. You need to do that if there's a situation brewing in the workplace in which there may be someone who's abusive or hostile uh, and contributing to a hostile work environment. All these things are crisis situations or brewing crisis situations that could cause you tremendous reputation damage. So while you're thinking about these four severe catastrophic crisis situations, it's also a good time to think about those other crisis situations uh, just below the intensity level of the ones I discussed that require your attention. The other thing you can do right now, assuming you're not in crisis mode as we speak, is to create template media statements that can be used in the event of one of these scenarios. So for example, let's say there was uh, an earthquake uh, that impacted your business or, or one of your offices. And let's say that there were injuries to some of your employees. So right now, if, and this is uh, whether you live in an earthquake zone, a flood zone, uh, of course, we all live in zones where there could be terrorism. So there's no uh, geographical uh, barriers uh, where these incidents can't happen. So keep that in mind. Uh, don't think it can't happen to you because you don't live in a certain part of the world. So the first thing you would do in a situation like that, if it was an earthquake, for example, 
is to put out a short statement that acknowledges that there were injuries, that maybe they were brought to local hospitals, and you could then, most importantly, convey your empathy, your condolences if anybody was killed, your prayers are with the victims and their families. Uh, that is the most important thing you could do in the early stages of a crisis. Be human. Don't be afraid to show emotion. Uh, that is something you actually must do. And it doesn't mean you're any less in control of the situation. It just means you're human. And people, and the media particularly, will appreciate that. Those statements that you put out, such as the one I just gave as an example, can be doubled for usage on social media channels, and they should be. So, for example, if you've issued a statement uh, on your website and, or emailed it to reporters, you should also post it on your uh, Twitter account, on your Facebook page, and anywhere else that people look for you, uh, look for your organization online. Very important. It's also critically important to attribute these statements to the head of your organization. So whether it's the CEO, the president, uh, the president of a college, or the executive vice president of a nonprofit, uh, it should have attribution, it should have a name. And in the most serious situations, you're going to be uh, on camera, whether it is the national media uh, in your face or at, a, or at a press conference podium, or you may even consider if you are out of the area when a disaster happens, uh, recording a video just like I'm doing right now on uh, YouTube. There are many, uh, many tools you can use to record a short video uh, of your CEO, of your president, of your uh, executive expressing that statement face-to-face uh, -face as I'm doing now, at least virtually. That gives uh, a human touch uh, to a tragedy, and people really appreciate that. People need to see that. Unfortunately, Many companies uh, fail to do these basic things. They fail to show the humanity in the face of these catastrophic crisis situations. And that is a real disconnect with their brand very often. And it does affect them. So make sure the first thing you do is show the empathy, show the sympathy, get some statement out initially, even if it's one or two sentences, that acknowledges the incident happened, that shows the empathy uh, and concern for the, uh, the victims. You will be back in touch with the media uh, in a few hours and maybe even the next morning, depending on what time of day it is. Uh, it's really important to give updates to the media throughout a severe crisis situation. We saw that in Boston. The other thing we saw in Boston that impressed me was the sense of unity. So you had a news conference. You had two news conferences the night of April 15th. Uh, you had the mayor of Boston. You had the governor of Massachusetts. Uh, you had the head of the FBI Boston office. You had the Massachusetts uh, congressional delegation uh, showing a sense of unity, showing a sense of leadership. Really important. Uh, and of course, that was that reminded me of what we saw uh, in the immediate aftermath of 9-11 here in New York City. The same thing with Mayor Giuliani, Governor Pataki, and other officials. People need to feel reassured when these catastrophes hit. And they need to know all the leaders are working together. Really important. So enlist those uh, colleagues of yours long before you need them. Get them together. Make a plan that if such, a, such and such happens, that you guys can get in touch with each other when delivering remarks to the media in the immediate aftermath of a crisis. Anyway, I'm going to wrap this up by saying uh, thank you for watching The Crisis Show. Uh, our website is www.thecrisisshow.com. If you'd like to tweet about anything you've heard here tonight, uh, please use hashtag The Crisis Show. Again, my name is Rich Klein. Uh, thank you for watching, and we'll see you again real soon.